Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to show you how the cabbage in our cut flower garden is doing. You can see it right behind me. I planted two giant rows on either side of the walkway. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at it. I wanna to talk to you about what I've done in terms of fertilizer, pest management, and then we're gonna harvest whatever's good. We're not gonna harvest till this evening. My mom's gonna come over. We're gonna harvest together. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna take whatever we don't save. I'll save one or two heads back for my family to eat. But I just counted, there's 54 heads that are good out here. Uh, we're gonna take the surplus down to the garden center and give it all away. I did get on the food bank's website just to see if they were accepting consumer donations again. I think those regulations changed during COVID. It still says that they're not, but I think I'll contact our local um, food bank here and see what their regulations are. So maybe in the future we can start you know, donating back to them. But in the time being, I don't think we'll have any problems finding home for the rest of these cabbage. Aren't they so beautiful? It's almost kind of hard, I have to admit, to pull these up to harvest these because they provide such a beautiful um, hedge right here in the flower garden. And the flower garden is just, you know, in process. We've done a tremendous amount. This is the first year we've been in this space, of course. You know, all of it's new, the uh, fence back here, the orchard. We actually are going to start building a cute little shed right in the back here, uh, probably within the next month. And we've got lots of gorgeous stuff, like all the dahlias are up. The onions are doing fantastic. Um, peppers, we've already got like some big bell peppers going on over here. Look at these. I can see the drips are running right now, which makes me happy because it's supposed to be 100 degrees today. But we've got some gorgeous things. Barracuda peppers. There's gypsy peppers right there ready to pick. I actually noticed too that there are a couple of zucchini forming here on my one zucchini plant. Um, I actually do have flowers. They're coming up. You can see the little seedlings if you look really close, but all of these rows are completely full. And then the artichokes have put on quite a bit of size. Look at these. Aren't they gorgeous? They were so little when we planted them and we've had so much wind that I'm really thankful that they've survived that and they look as good as they do. Corn is up right here. You can see that we did put a staking system in place so that I could lash those corn stalks as they grow. This row is actually full of amaranth. I need to pull the drip tape. This is the one problem with not burying your drip tape. It gets all wonky until the crops kind of grow up and hold it in place. And no amount of staking these at the end helps. So we're gonna just pull. There we go. There, that looks a little better. Anyway, we've got tons of sunflowers up here. And the sweet peas do have a lot of blooms on them too, which is exciting. They're not super tall, but I kind of didn't expect that with how sad they were after we planted them. And then our vine crops are up and looking great. We lost one melon plant in our windstorm. In fact, we should put a little clip of what that looked like. So I lost this one ambrosia melon plant, which is okay. It's still early enough. I've got seeds. I can pop more in the ground. They're all looking so nice and fresh. And then quick look over here. This is stuff you guys that I seeded really early. I thought I lost all of it. Larkspurs are starting to bloom. I'm not sure that any of this red cabbage is ready quite yet. Let's take a look. If it is, we'll harvest it. Yeah, the heads are still pretty little, but they are forming. So that's exciting celery, onions, potatoes, snapdragons, and zinnias. Um, I did plant lilies in this kind of empty looking row to about here. So I'm gonna plant cosmos seeds. That's my last remaining empty spot right there. Anyway, got a little sidetracked there. I wanted to show you the cabbage. So when I planted them, I added biotone starter fertilizer in the ground and some land and sea compost. Um, what I did was I did the biotone fertilizer, I planted all the cabbage and then I just top dressed with the land and sea. I didn't really work that into the soil. So it was actually very pretty. I think I have a picture of it. When Benjamin and I were doing a garden tour one evening, you can kind of see it in the background with like this little brown mound around the plants. At first I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do that because maybe it will burn the plants, but it didn't. Plants are doing great. That's the only fertilizer these have received and they have not been sprayed at all. So what I like to do typically is I'll plant crops that I know aphids like nearby. Like I planted Brussels sprouts, but they are looking pretty clean. Usually Brussels sprouts attract the aphids and I just let some of the crops just have aphids um, so that they aren't 
uh, as interested in the crops I want to keep and then uh, they don't seem to bother anything. So I did sacrifice a few of these cabbage to aphids. They did attack the, uh, the cabbage. I'll show you what they look like. They look pretty bad, but it kept the rest of them clean. And I feel like that's a pretty benign way of, of handling a, an issue like that. That way I can give the affected cabbages to the chickens and the rest of them are clean and have absolutely no pesticides on them. Okay, so here is an aphid ridden cabbage plant. There's two of them right here in this little clump. Look how thick they are. But then the cabbage right next to it is clean. Clean, clean, clean. Let's see, I think we're clean all the way down to the end here. I've got one that's like succumbing to the heat. I need to handle that. Oh, right here, there's another one. And then right next to it, clean. Clean, isn't that crazy? But aren't they gorgeous? They're so perfect. And there's a few that are small. I'll still harvest that one, but I'll probably leave that plant right there and see what happens. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna go see if I can mess with my root cellar. When, when it was finished last year, I didn't ever have to employ the AC unit because it was cold enough outside. It was maintaining the right amount of cool temperatures. It was more of a heat issue, like making sure it maintained the right amount of heat and it didn't freeze in there. Um, so if I can get that kicked on today um, and get it kind of down to like 55, 60 degrees, I think my mom and I will harvest these tonight and then uh, we'll put them in the root cellar for the evening and then tomorrow morning we'll take everything down. So let's head back to the barn. We'll take a look in the root cellar and hopefully get that AC unit running. I think we may have some cabbage ready in the raised bed garden too. So we'll stop there on our way just to double check. We've got cabbage in here that's looking pretty good. I planted some dahlias in here uh, a couple days ago and that's right before we had that 50 mile an hour windstorm and it just popped a bunch of them off, broke them off right at the base. So disappointing. Uh, this one looks pretty good. Yeah, they all look pretty good. These ones look a little bit more eaten. Hmm, pretty good though, overall. And these red ones look like they're a little bit more advanced, but still a little bit on the small side. So I'll leave those. I see some little calendula seedlings in here. And the corn, the ornamental glass gem corn that I planted the other day, already up and looking great. Marigold seeds that we planted, looking awesome. I see the very first nasturtium seedling coming up. This is a black velvet nasturtium. So I have two rows of those and then two rows of peach nasturtiums. I need to stay focused on the task at hand here. There's the garlic, it's dried down quite a bit. It's still got some flex though, so I can clean and braid it. Um, I do want to get the root cellar going too because this will be cured here in about a week, we'll be ready to put it in storage. Okay, so you can see right now we've got a 74 degree temp in there, 50% humidity. Still have some squash from last year that are still good and three pumpkins that are still good. Crazy at 74 degrees, they still are nice. Anyway, we've got like all of our potato baskets and onion baskets, those are long gone. All of our dahlia storage crates. And then this is our system up here. So I need to power up the AC unit. This is our vent fan here. So anyway, I think I need a ladder. I can't, oh, maybe not. Okay. Oh, well that's good. Okay, so now that I have this up and running, I'm gonna be monitoring the temperature all day. And if it looks good, we'll harvest tonight. If it doesn't seem to, like I may need to mess with the settings and I might need to learn a little bit more about the system. If it doesn't cool down, then we'll go ahead and harvest first thing in the morning. All right, it's been a few hours and I was able to figure it out. So I actually went and checked on it about an hour after I reset it and it went down to 40 degrees. And the little floor heater that I have in there actually kicked on and it was running. It was glorious. It felt so good to step into 40 degrees. And it actually feels really good in there right now. But it's been at a steady 61, so I think I've got it all figured out. I'm gonna make sure one of the gators is empty with some of these um, crates, the dahlia tuber crates. I think that'll be perfect if we can just cut the cabbage, put them in the crates, and then just load them into the root cellar for the night. Just have to unload a few things back behind the barn.
right, we're ready to roll. Okay, what time is it? Like 7? 30? Uh, it's, it's close to 8. Close to 8 p.m. Yeah. Mom is here to help me get all of these <laughs> cabbages um, harvested. It shouldn't take us very long, but we thought it would be fun. And we're going to line them up in these crates and put them in the root cellar. And then tomorrow I'll bring them down to the garden center. We'll see if we can <laughs> pawn off some of these cabbages. We're going to advertise. Yeah, we'll advertise tonight. Yes. Free cabbages. Yes. Okay, so I brought out four different types of tools. I thought we could like hack it up. Oh, hack at it. That's, that's intense. It is a little intense. <laughs> I think this would be a, like a really good one. That looks good. I brought a pair of Felcos and then a Felco pruning saw, which might yeah, be a little overreaction that, too. Well, I, for some of the big ones, I don't know. <laughs> we try them out, test it. Yeah, you want to try that? Yeah. Demonstrate. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is sharp. That looks very sharp. Yeah, it's really sharp. And look at this. Honey of a cabbage right here. Right here. Yep. Look at that. Ooh, that is beautiful. And you grew these organically? I did. No pesticides. That's awesome. And only, um, I used some of the biotone and then uh, land and sea at planting and that's it. No extra fertilizer. And there's no aphids. I mean, these well, are aphid magnets. I have a few that are my host, the host, host plants. plants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Because I think I planted 60, some, yeah. 60, I think 60, and I've got yeah. 54. You ever heard of kimchi? Well, yeah, somebody asked if I was going to make that. I don't even know what that is. What it's, is that? It's a pickled vegetable. Uh, you can use lots of different types of vegetables, but uh -huh. it's like just like sauerkraut kind of, oh. only with different vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about it's that. Good. It's good for you, honey. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking we just line them up in the crates. Sure. And yeah, just cut Should away. we race? <laughs> <gasps> You're on. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think this weighs like 10 pounds. We should uh, weigh it. I bought a big I digital scale. Oh. Maybe I'll call Aaron and see if we could set yeah. it up quick. Oh, for sure. That'd Isn't be fun. That, doesn't that look good? Yeah. yeah that's, that's awesome. A, that's a nice one. I'm pretty impressed. Look at that. So we got 50 heads of cabbage. Pretty decent. Four Very of them decent. actually were smaller than I expected. And we yeah. went ahead and harvested some of the smallish ones because, you know. For one person. Yeah, maybe not everybody yeah. wants yeah. a huge head of cabbage. But a lot of them are just medium size, like this one here. And then we've got a couple of beautiful ones. I want to take a picture of this one. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to just take them to a hose quick, give them a quick rinse just to rinse off any dirt. And then maybe get a weight. Yeah, I think we should have the, yeah. that big, big one. So we stopped off to water the blueberries really quick. And it's a nice spot right over it's here in really the shade nice. and yeah. protected. Yeah. So we're just gonna give these a quick rinse. Where are your sunglasses? In the bottom of your purse. <laughs> <laughs> My statement glasses. They are your statement glasses. <laughs> should be wearing them. They're so large, they protect your whole face from sun damage. I know. Yes. It, it does protect. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know what your opinion is of the one plant per pot project. Who came up with that idea? That was Erin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the amaryllis. Uh-huh. They're a little out of touch. A little, a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's rude. I do too. <laughs> they should be blooming a lot earlier or a lot later. Yeah. But look at they this are pretty. gorgeous one. Yeah, they are pretty. They are. <laughs> I've got some more buds down there, but a lot of those oh, have already bloomed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. 
Did I mention that I bought a big digital scale so we could start weighing all of our harvests? This will be the first harvest. Hopefully we have the right batteries. Erin was gonna work on setting up the scale so we could get a weight on all these cabbage. So we got the scale set up that was easy. Just had to plug it into the wall and then we zeroed it out. So I think what we should do is maybe weigh one of those crates. Yeah. And then we can just, I'll back the gator in. I think I, that might be, you want me? You, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Okay, so if we get a weight of one of these crates, then we can go ahead and weigh all four of them and deduct the weight. This, how much over this weighs? 3.5 pounds is what the crate weighs. Whoa. 48.7. Crate number two, not as heavy, I don't think. No. 34.4. Nice. Crate three is 38.7. Oh. I don't want to stand on that scale. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the lightest of all, 17 and a half. 125.4 pounds of cabbage. That'll make a lot of coleslaw. That will make it a tremendous <laughs> amount. Or kimchi. Yes, or, or <laughs> Chinese mm, chicken salad. Chinese chicken salad, Love yeah, that. yep. Or, or just good Russell. roasted. Oh. I wonder how much Russell weighs. We should do yeah. it. Yeah, see if he. <laughs> okay. All right, stay there, Russell. Okay. Ooh, ten point four. Oh. Oh, oh look, he oh, likes it on yeah. the scale. Yeah. You like that? Good job, Russell. Yeah. Wonder how much your other one weighs. Yeah, cheddar. He's cheddar. He's looking a little skinnier. He's looking a little svelte. Is he? Got a summer bod going. Okay. Line him up on the floor, I guess. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, cabbages. Whoa, that's heavy. Oh, it looks like mom's getting all ready. Free cap, oh, her sign looks better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> My sign's not as nice. I'm, I'm taking this off. No, no, that's perfect. I think you should leave it. You know what? I think, no, it, no. I love yours. No, because I think I can stand and flag people in the street. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I think yours is great. Okay, well, so, I'll, I'll put the, I'll, I'll write it again. Yeah. Okay, this is the 48 pounder. go pile the cabbage so it looks more full. <laughs> it's looking a little scant. I'd rather have more full and a fewer racks. All right guys, so it's been a little under an hour. There's about 10 left. And we're actually gonna head home because I've got a couple more projects that I'd like to button up before it reaches the projected 99 degrees that it's supposed to be today. And I'm sure they won't have any trouble giving away the last 10 cabbage. So what a fun day. I love when we're able to get out and go do something different. Um, I got to meet a lot of fun people and got to learn some new cabbage recipes, Erin. Oh, good. So I still have cabbage in the garden. I still have four green ones up in our raised, well, I think I showed you in this video. I started it yesterday morning and I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, but I still have the four up in the garden by the kitchen and then I've got all the red cabbage yet that still needs to mature. So we'll still have some to eat and there's a few small ones still left out in the cut flower garden that we'll let grow. I was just, even though some of them we picked were small today uh, or last night, um, I wanted to get them harvested before it reaches the projected degrees that it's supposed to be uh, this next week because I think we'd start dealing with some splitting and things like that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's just so much fun to grow some extra produce and just give it away as you can um, if you have a space that allows you to do that. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. You're gonna make
me a sauerkraut sandwich? Have I ever made you a sauerkraut sandwich? You can start. You got lots of cabbage. Probably a recipe or two. That's a, that's a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like sauerkraut anyway. Yeah.